I want to talk about Inside Number 9, uh, Series 4, Episode 2, Bernie Clifton's Dressing Room. This is a excellent piece of British TV writing. I'm not going to say comedy writing because whilst it's funny, um, it's also incredibly dramatic and well conceived to the point where it's just good TV. You, I don't think it needs to be slotted into a category. It surrounds um, a duo from an 80s comedy um, cabaret act, uh, Crackers and Cheese, or Cheese and Crackers. Uh, there's a little argument over which way around names should be in the episode. Um, and after a 30 year split, they've come back together in a rehearsal space in a village hall with all of their props and gags around them in order to put on a show of some sort. Now, I'm not going to say any more about the plot itself, but I want to talk about what the show concerns and what it puts across. It's a sort of bittersweet ode to a style of comedy and performance that in the last 20 or so years has fallen out of favour because of people either sneering at it or not thinking it's clever or astute enough. Um, and what this episode goes to show is that in order to perform that kind of act properly um, you have to practice, put a lot of effort into it and it takes a lot of care and attention. They're called comedy routines because you do them over and over again and you grind them down to drip every ounce of comedy and timing out of any given situation. If you know anything about history of comedy and acts and things like that, you'll know that any of those famous stage performers that had sort of improvisational moments or little asides to the stage or to camera, they were not just by chance, they were rehearsed and they were put into their acts on purpose because they increased the comedy value of that act. Um, and even in this there's a little discussion on things like that and how, whether they should or shouldn't be mugging to the audience. There's discussion on, or reference to rather, I won't say discussion on, but there's reference to the um, taking steps to even name the biscuit. You don't say biscuit, you say Gary Baldy. That's reference to a comedy convention that says details are funnier than being generic and it's true. Um, I suppose I should say that my family has a bit of a background in performance and comedy and cabaret type acts so I've been lucky enough as I grew up during the time period where this act is supposed to be from um, to witness both sides of the curtain and one of the things they nail really well through either having done it themselves or researched it uh, is that they get that people who tend to do that kind of level of performance and put that level of effort in aren't happy <laughs> all the time, that they're miserable bastards really. Um, and it reminds me a lot of certain family members of mine. Um, and this just goes to balance the two viewpoints. You've got one character who sort of represents the modern take on things where everything has to be sort of sharp and witty and off the, you know, and a bit more sneery. Whereas you've got the other character who enjoys the more silly comic act that you have to remember for more than one decade for many many years um, the entire nation used to laugh at and enjoy and still laugh at and enjoy people will still watch the kind of acts that they do little segments of in this episode and get a massive amount of enjoyment out of it and one of the things people forget that they sort of subtly and unsubtly show in this episode is the level of craftsmanship and effort that people have to put into these acts. There's a section where they have to balance something in their act and they don't necessarily refer to the fact that they're balancing something but you see them do it and when you see them rehearsing it you have to remember that it's all a skill and a practice thing that if it wasn't done properly would look terrible um, including timing and things like that um, and this really gets that across. Um, and to go along with that, you've got to remember this is written by Reith Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton and it, it just goes to show a level of skill. This wasn't put together by a big team of writers, well not that I'm aware of, whether <laughs> they cut them out of the credits, I don't know. But it's, um, it's just well executed, well conceived and incredibly enjoyable TV. And not every episode of Inside Number 9 hits the mark, and that's fine, because it's gems like this that really make it worthwhile watching. And 
it makes it worth watching more than once, particularly when you've got the luxury of having it for free on the iPlayer if you're in the UK. Uh, definitely recommend watching it.